So sharing my screen. And keeping you guys on mute. Okay. So I'm getting some background noise. So, so far we have discussed, um, we talked about HDFS and how to uh, create a file on HDFS and how to upload a file from local file system to HDFS. And after that, once you have the data um, in HDFS, so how to process that either using MapReduce or PIC, you have, we have seen that. And once we make it structured, so either store it in Impala or Hive, of course, both. So if you store it in one, it can be accessible on the other. And if you need updates, store them in HBase. So store them in Hive backed up by HBase storage handler meaning HBase with Hive integrated. So all these things, so at least we are now in a good shape to sort to deal with the files that are present in HDFS and transform them and perform updates, perform transformations, uh, transactions, all those things. Now, so before you do all these operations, there should be some mechanisms to up, upload or push your data into your HDFS, right? And um, <clears throat> so far we didn't cover much. We didn't, uh, we just saw like just uploading a file from local file system into your HDFS manually using that Hadoop FS hyphen put command. So coming to the real time problems. So when, uh, if any enterprise, if, if it want to use Hadoop, so they might not be starting from scratch in the software, right? So they might have their, all their data, existing data in RDBMSS. So mostly prior to Hadoop, they have all their data they might have the, the data in Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, okay? Or Netija, Teradata, okay? So all these different RDBMS servers, they might have had all their data. So now we should have a simple mechanism to transfer the data between your RDVMS to your Hadoop. So using MapReduce, we have a DB input format and DB output format. Also from PIG, we have a DB storages. So RDVMS uh, direct st storer and loaders, but even they, they need a, a bit of extra efforts so that's why so hadoop community the open source community came up with a tool called scoop the scoop name itself is came from sql plus hadoop the first two letters of your sql and the last three letters of hadoop it became scoop okay so that means the data transfer between your Hadoop and RDBMS. Both uh, to and fro. To and from. So that is the one liner uh, importance of your scoop. Your RDVMS2 
Nadu. Okay. Again, here from RDBMS, what are all the systems that are supported? Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, uh, Netija, okay, Teradata, SQL Server, these things. On target, so you have HDFS support, you have directly support for Hive, you can directly create into HBase. Okay. Even Accumulo, the, there is one more, another NoSQL database, similar to HBase. Even that is supported to transfer the data into it. Okay, but let's not worry about this, since we didn't cover that much. So from any of these sources on left side, we can transfer the data onto any of the destinations on the right side using the scope tool and this is very simple open source and command line based tool so what is it how does it work and architecture and scoop import export and all those commands we'll see okay so meanwhile let me start this okay i think i should have so by default your cloud a quick start vms come with Scoop also installed on your machines. Okay, so we'll see all those commands slowly. So what is Scoop? A command line interface for data import and export to Hadoop. And in its architecture, it uses the MapReduce jobs map, I mean, Inside that map reduce jobs again, it is just a map only job. Okay, it doesn't run reducers, only maps, map tasks it runs and supports incremental loads. We'll discuss uh, separately about this. And Scoop is written in Java, licensed by Apache, no public license and uses plugins for new types of data sources, meaning there are any other um, RDBMSs that are not supported. If there is any uh, JDBC loaders, drivers for that, so once you can load those JDBC drivers into the scoop lib folder, so it can support that new data sources as well. And how does scoop works? So given your data, let's say if you have 1 million record table in Oracle, so that get sliced, sliced into different partitions. And for each partition, so it runs one separate map task and that map task is responsible for transferring the data. Mappers transfer the data and you don't need to deal with the data types also so Scoop can handle efficiently the source data types and uh, properly onto your target HDFS. And on your target, you can import into Hive, HBase, and HCatalog, I mean, both are same. If you load it into Hive, so you'll get into HCatalog, but we'll skip this also. And again, if you are getting that into just into HDFS. In HDFS, you can store it in CSV format or sequence files or parquet files. Um, so some of these file formats are supported by Scoop. In the early days, almost like one year, uh, two years back, we didn't have the optimized file formats being supported by Scoop. 
Okay, so these days, even these parquet, uh, these sequence files, all those things are being supported by school. It's an interface between Hadoop and NoSQL. So get data from relational databases and data warehouses or NoSQL databases and load data to HDFS and Hive. And it has integrity with Uzi as well for scheduling purposes. We'll discuss this anyway. You don't need to highlight it here. Yeah. So this is its architecture. It's very simple. And this is again like a client side tool, client machine tool. So this scoop needs to be installed only on the edge node. It doesn't need to be installed on all of your slave machines. Let's say if you have a scoop installed on your edge node, there is an import command to copy a table from your RDVMS. Okay. So then the scoop engine will take that command, will convert that into a MapReduce job, and it will just fetch that how many records are there in the table and based on them. So it will divide that into number of splits. By default, it will split into four partitions. So four input splits if you have a primary key on your table in the source RDVMS. In your MySQL table, if you have a primary key for any table, so then that table will get by default divided into four map tasks. And it submits those four map tasks and those four map tasks parallelly run on the uh, DVMS table and they transfer the four partitions back onto your HDFS. And you will see four output files on your HDFS. Anyway, we'll run and we'll see those things. Okay. So here, since it has bi-directional support between your RDVMS and Hadoop, so anytime you get data from your RDVMS to Hadoop, from RDVMS to Hadoop is called as import, and from Hadoop to RDVMS, again from HDFS directories into your MySQL, we call that as export. Okay, so during the import process, so the table will get divided into different ranges by the primary key. Meaning, let's say, um, so how does that create? Let's say I have a table called employee ID, employee table. So where employee ID is the primary key for that table. And this employee ID starts from 1000 and ends at 11,000. Okay, so let me assume this. So I have total 10,000 employees in this. Now, so how does it, by default, if you don't specify, the number of map tasks will be four map tasks. Okay, so if you have number of map tasks as four, then it will read this primary key range primary key range is from 1000 to 11000 now what it will do is it will subtract these two ranges so 11000 minus 1000 it will get 10000 and that range by 4 number of mappers okay so that means you will get 2500 as the range for each map task. Now, for the first map task, the initial primary key plus 2500, and for the next map task, 1000, the initial primary key plus 2 into 
your 2500 range in the same way 1000 plus your 3 into 3 star 2500 okay so that way it divides all of them all these primary keys range into different map tasks so from 1000 onwards starting from 1000 primary key id so up to 2500 it reads it process by the first mapper and up to 5000 the second mapper up to 7500 the third mapper and up to 10000 range the fourth mapper that is what is written here so divide table into ranges using primary key max min values create mappers for each range mappers write to multiple hdfs nodes creates text or sequence files and in the process of this thing in the background scoop generates java class for resulting hdfs file to convert your data types from your rdbms to corresponding data types on your hdfs if you use your map reduce or pick so then all this writing the java code or using that load storer classes and conversion of those data types it is completely the developer's headache but now if you use scoop you don't need to worry about all those things and especially if you are directly importing onto your hive so it generates the hive definition and auto loads that data directly into your hive databases okay and scoop export on the other hand so when you have data on your hdfs directory so all those files in hdfs directory they can get inserted back to an rdbms table okay so i think these uh, points again um repetitive let me explain these some of these features listed here scoop features compatible with almost any jdbc enabled database so all these rdbmss that i have listed here so they have jdbc drivers so that's why since scoop is written in java and it uses the backend jdbc connectors to connect to any of these rdbms tools and that's where uh, how it transfers the data into your hdfs and it has the support to hive auto loading the data into directly into hive tables and hvers support as well special handling for databases with large objects and this uh, in reality it has many more limitations let's not worry about this very rare scenarios that your rtbms will have the lobs and storing them and special handling for i can say instead of lobs special handling for null values okay and the scoop job management cluster configuration where class support all these things let's see one by one okay and other than jdbc support some of the databases have the direct connectivity as well uh, they they are like mysql and postgres so in MySQL, you have direct dump, which doesn't use the JDBC connectivity, uh, but still you, you will provide the JDBC connection string. It might use or it might not use. If you specify the direct load, so then it, it uses the fast retrieval path. Okay. 
So I will show you that command as well. And in Postgres, or uh, in Postgres, there is an uh, a workaround to achieve the feature, but in any other RDBMS select like Teradata and Etch or Oracle, so we don't have that uh, direct import path. We always need to connect through the JDBC drivers, and from there, you need to get that data transferred. Okay, so that is the basic theory. Some of the things that we wanted to discuss before. Um, we jump into the hands-on. Now it is the time to just practice these commands. There is nothing, it is very simple tool. It's import and export, that's it. Only two commands. And inside imports, there is one special type called incremental imports. We'll see that. Okay. First, uh, in our Cloudera Quick Start VMs, um, I think some of the old Quick Start VMs have uh, this Postgres as well. But bare minimum, you will find MySQL installed on your Quick Start VMs. So you can practice with it. So if, if you practice with MySQL, so it's the same set of commands except maybe 1% difference. Uh, the, the something similar to the direct import command, except that all these commands can be applied to any other RDBMS. Only thing, your connection string will change. That's it. Okay? You don't need to practice the same commands on each and every RDBMS. Because I, I ran in real time against Netija, I ran them against Oracle. I ran them against Teradata. But when when I learned or when when I do any testing in local, I run it against MySQL. Okay. So all these commands will work irrespective of your what is your source RDBMS. So uh, all these commands are not dependent on your RDBMS type. Only the connection string, the driver class name, in case if you want, if you have to specify it separately. Okay. So anyway, I will highlight what things you need to change in order if you have to change. First, let's test our MySQL connections. I think um, the username is root. So password is Cloudera. Show databases. Mm. Have retail underscore db. Let me see what are the tables that are present in this. Okay. So I have some dummy tables here. So I can use them. So I think these are the default database that came from your Quick Start VM itself. Some test database. Okay. So you can let's use that. Now before 
this is uh, let's keep this mysql terminal in one one tab and another tab in this So on high level, uh, I will explain you these help commands. So what all things you can do with your scoop? It will list down all those things. Yeah, so you can see so many commands here. So something like scoop version, display the version of scoop. So you can play with this stuff. And scoop, uh, list databases and list tables. And scoop import, import all tables. Import mainframe, this is something that very recently uh, it got introduced uh, in order to play with this uh, you need IBM DB2 uh, drivers even yeah so I forgot to say this not just these RDBMSs uh, these the listed ones even the DB2 is also supported okay so DB2 was uh, being supported from the last couple of years back itself. Okay. So IBM DB2 drivers, you need that separately for that. And especially mainly you need to try with this is import and export these two. And sometimes the scoop job. That's it. That is enough. Okay. Now we'll see, uh, for simplicity, we'll see this list databases and list tables, at least before uh, querying your, before importing data from your MySQL to your HDFS. If you want to run any queries, of course you can run them on your RDBMS directly to see the list of databases and tables, the way I have uh, done now. So first I did show databases and verified all the databases and inside a particular database, I verified what are all the tables that are present and uh, what type of data this, this so-and-so table is having. So instead of logging into that MySQL database, if that database is somewhere remote, even if it's remote, if you have the database connection strings, of course you can do that. But the same functionality, you can achieve this through by list databases and list tables and eval. So running these three commands in a sequence, I could have achieved the same, I could have verified this thing, same from the scoop uh, tool itself. Okay, so let me run that for you scoop list hyphen databases hyphen hyphen connect jdbc colon mysql it's running on your local host so <clears throat> 
hyphen hyphen username root hyphen hyphen password cloud error see you could have seen this databases in the same fashion listed databases and it is able to list on all these things okay now once you list the databases you can list a tables inside a database so you provide this retailer underscore DV and list tables So MySQL syntax error exception unknown database retailer underscore db. The database name might be retail underscore db. It's not retailer. That's why. So you, you could have seen the same tables from here. And so instead of list tables, now you have seen, you got the list of tables, eval, scoop eval. Hyphen, hyphen eval or execute a SQL statement and display the results. Hyphen, hyphen query, let me see. Thank you, thank you. Select to start from products limit two. This is what I ran there, right? See. Whatever the statements that I ran there, I was able to run here as well. Okay. So for your reference, I will take these commands. I don't need these results. Let me give you all these comments in one place.
so there are uh, each slide separate slide for each commands but you don't need this much of okay now let me import this table so so far we have verified uh, this table we have uh, listed down all the databases and listed down the tables and verified the contents of a table now let's import this into uh, your hdfs okay and before sure. doing this, yes uh, anand Sorry, I'm a little bit lost. What did you try to compare your, uh, uh, I was not able to catch up with that. I'm not compare, I mean, okay. So it's not comparison. Something that I'm trying to show you is, you can transfer the data from your MySQL to your HDFS. You got that object, right? The problem statement. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. Next, before you transfer the data, first you will verify what are the databases that are present in your MySQL. Correct? Okay. Yep. So for that command, I ran list databases. To, right. to see what are the databases that are available. So I got the list of databases and I picked up one database and out of them. And then out of that database, what are the tables that are present in this database? I ran this command. And then, so there are multiple tables inside that. I just wanted to verify the contents of one table. I used eval command to see okay. few records of it before transferring. And now, if I like this contents, if I want to move this contents to a HDFS, we'll see the import command. Okay. So you just verified what table and you identified what the... What databases are there, what tables are there, and inside a table, what are the contents. So all these okay. things can be done from your MySQL shell also, and if you don't have direct access to your MySQL shell, if you have access only to scoop tool, so what I am trying to say is, yes, all these things can be verified from your scoop tool as well. And scoop eval, this is something like your MySQL shell only. It is not just for MySQL, whatever the connection string that you hear, you specify there. So you can run, you can evaluate any query. Okay. So instead of list databases, list tables also, if you could have given show databases here, so you should get that. Or show tables. Let's say if you run show tables, you should get the result of this query from here as well from the result of your eval query. <laughs> Let me see if you, sh you should get it. And the other one, the scoop, the scoop, uh, the command, uh, that is a separate interface. What is that? Sub scoop command? These are scoop yeah. commands only. Okay, okay. These the are difference is that, okay. But you're you're running this from Cloudera, uh, from the um, what's the term? I'm I'm blanking on that on the term. But uh, you're running this as a command, and the other one is just scoop uh, interface, right? We don't have scoop interface. This this is commands only through commands only we run it. Okay. okay. Through commands only, we'll get the data transferred from your RDBMS to HDFS. That's it. Oh, okay. I see. I you see. don't have graphical uh, user interface. 
For you, there is no GUI for this card. There is no okay. GUI for this. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. So, so what I was trying to show you is under scoop help, you will find a lot of other options, but these are like very less important, less list tables, list databases, evolve. So anyway, these can be done from your directly from your MySQL shell also. There is no mandatory uh, stuff that you need to use it from scope itself. So what I'm trying to highlight is, yes, you can do them from here as well, from scoop as well. Now let's focus on the import and export. So these are the two important commands that you need to highlight or that you need to concentrate on. Okay. So for scoop import, it's the same process. It's just that scoop import hyphen hyphen connect. So retail DB username password. You have specified hyphen hyphen table products table hyphen hyphen target dir slash user slash cloudera and slash let's say slash scoop slash products okay now let me give this table this directory if this directory is not there it will get created if it is there it will throw an exception that the target directory already exists because in the background it runs a map reduce job and tries to create that the new directory okay so in the import what are the new parameters that i gave bare minimum the table name and the target directory so what is the table that you need to import and to where on your HDFS, this needs to get imported. Okay, and let's see these two parameters first, and then we'll explore. There are some many, many more uh, arguments that you can pass into your import command. So we'll see all those things slowly. And if you observe these messages, so it's displaying this scoop version and it's giving you a warning message that setting your password on the command line is insecure. Consider using hyphen P. We'll see that as well. Instead of using hyphen hyphen password, it is recommending us to use hyphen capital P. Okay. And after that, it's generating that code the required code for it. Okay, preparing to use your MySQL streaming result set and code generation tool was ran and the code code was generated. And if you see here, execute SQL statement, select T dot star from products as limit T1. Just it was a test where it was running. Okay. Now um so after that, it prepared this jar file to copy that table. So this jar file, you can find it on the HDFS. This jar file, you will find it on HDFS while this uh, scoop import is running. Okay. And by looking at your connection string, it is recommending you a few more things like it looks like you are importing from MySQL. This transfer can be even more faster if you use hyphen hyphen direct argument, extra argument. Okay. And so beginning import of products table. And if you see here, it's running MapReduce job, connecting to resource manager on 8032 port number. And your bounding values query. Bounding values query means to get the min and max of your primary key. Min and max of your primary key. So 
this query it will prepare by default by scoop itself so now uh, if you don't specify the number of mappers as i told you by default it uses four map tasks so four input splits so number of splits are four so one two thirteen forty five so these are the product ids that are present in the table so one two one thirteen forty five and these got distributed across four map tasks let's wait for this map uh, map reduce job to finish this okay so once it finishes next time let's try using the hyphen hyphen direct okay but this hyphen hyphen direct is available only for mysql without any extra efforts but with some extra uh, efforts by administrators they can set it up this for your postgres as well but for other rdbmss you don't have this hyphen hyphen direct argument available they have to copy the data through the jdbc connection stream only okay so seems like my machine is a bit slow today that's why it's taking this much of time otherwise would not have take this much time I have one question. Yes, Neetu. Uh, like uh, it is suggesting that if you use hyphen hyphen direct, mm -hmm. then our transfer can be faster. Mm -hmm. So after getting this suggestion, if we want to implement the same suggestion in the job we are running, can we abort the job and uh, do this with a suggested command? Yes, we can do that. You can abort the job and you can use that hyphen hyphen direct and how do we about the job huh? kill the job map reduce kill job hadoop hyphen uh hadoop kill command is there or yarn okay. kill command is there okay. okay thank you yeah so it imported 1345 records okay so we have seen that uh product ids from zero to uh, 1 to 1345 you can see all those 1345 this this is sometimes useful for your statistics this is where you can verify how many records got successfully transferred now let's see that file on hdfs hadoop fs minus ls slash user slash cloudera slash scoop slash products so let me yeah first let me show you a list so since it ran four map tasks it creates four uh, output files there in the target directory so if i run this i am select start from products so 1345 this is my last record you can see so four output files and equally equal size because you have a primary key and primary key ranges it divides that equally and let's say so hadoop fs hyphen ls can 
see that 1345 record. So by default, you got your comma separated file, right? You got your CSV file got created for that data that is present in your MySQL. The delimiter between your fields. Right? 1345 comma 59 comma Nike men's home game Jersey Street all these things comma comma okay so now in the early days of our scoop where we didn't have the direct support for hive so this comma separated file we used to take this and we create this table in hive we create a table in hive and specify all the column names and column data types and then we use this load data in path this file and then we used to copy that into hive table right if you know that if you have a csv file you know how to create a table for this in in hive i don't need to explain that yes you are one out yes is this clear yeah yeah yes like here we are not using reducers right no need of reducer only map yes so here it is running four maps yes okay that's the reason why it's creating part m files yes part m. R. if it is only map map task then it creates part m files if, if it runs uh, reducer also then you you can see part r files if there are some small tables and if you want to merge it and run is it not possible you you can run it as a query you can run the query union and uh, then you can you can get it okay? so when we run union is isn't it required to uh, run reducer it runs only on map even in that case yes it's just combining your results right it it never runs reducer Red user is only to do the aggregation, right? Sums, counts, and max, mins, all those things. Okay. Yeah, it's just for importing, not to do any uh, aggregation. Transformations or aggregation. Yeah, no transformations. It's just okay. importing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Of course, you can do the basic kind of. Uh, basic i think where classes basic queries yeah i saw that uh, scoop supports some where class so i just got a yeah. in the slide i saw yep i will show you that again okay so we got the table got uh, imported onto hdfs and let's say if you need this directly onto your high um here hyphen hyphen Hive import, I think, or import hive. And I need to give this temporary directory products underscore TMP hyphen hyphen hive import. Let's see if I have any products table in hive or not. So if I have it, then the table already exists, exception or something. If I don't have this table, by default, the table also gets created. Let's see that scenario first. So we don't have the products table there. Okay. So let me hyphen hyphen hive import. Using hive specific delimiters for output, you can override delimiters with fields terminated by. Shivan, don't you need to have a table before importing in the hive? No need. We don't have table here, right? We don't have the products table here. So whatever the table, your source table name on your MySQL with the same table name you will get a table created on your hive 
since you have a my products table here so with the same name you will get the table created in your uh, hive let's see that okay Okay, so let that run. Uh, meanwhile, we'll discuss a few other topics. Issue of question for you. Mm -hmm. On the hive, this will go under the default database, right? Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, so yeah, I, I know I can guess your questions. We'll discuss all these through the uh, arguments. Okay, different different arguments we'll see here, and okay. we'll run some of them there. So it's very simple tool. I, I, in my opinion, if I yeah, yeah. To hear itself also, you'll be able to learn. Okay. Yeah. But let me cover some of the important arguments. Um, okay. So here you can see the import hyphen hyphen connect username password table and hyphen m hyphen m followed by a number. This is what it decides the number of how many mappers are how many um, yeah how many mappers it should run okay since there are no reducers we specify so using this argument hyphen m we can increase or decrease the parallelism of your scoop job let's say if you have 1 billion record table or 10 million record table obviously four mappers will not be sufficient just running the four map task if you run only four map tasks, it, it takes very long time. So whereas if you can increase this count, then it can run 50 map tasks or 100 map tasks. So by default, your administrators will put an upper limit for this on your cluster. Otherwise, it can be any number. Okay. So by default in our real-time cluster, so we have a limit of 50. Okay. So you can use up to a hyphen M50 or a hyphen M100. So if there is no limit, so those many parallel map tasks will get triggered at the same time. And they all will start fetching the data from your RDBMS MySQL table, employees table onto your target directory. Okay. So that is the import command. Now, um, scoop hyphen hyphen table uh, import all rows but column specific uh, I I think I have skipped that connection string here so you need to specify scoop import hyphen hyphen connect username password and then followed by the table table name hyphen hyphen columns if you want to specify if you want to retrieve only a set of columns you don't need all the columns from your source table you can specify this hyphen hyphen columns as well and if you don't want all the records if you need only records based on a particular criteria you can use this hyphen hyphen where okay and when you are creating a file on your hdfs instead of storing uh, by default, it stores as a text file, hyphen hyphen as text file, and comma separated CSV, comma separated text file. 
does it still uses four mappers? Even if you have one record, uh, it uses four mappers only. If you have a primary key on the table and RDBMS, the remaining three mappers will create an empty files. And the first mapper will create that one record copy. Okay. So is, is my voice still breaking? Narendra? Sorry, I didn't check that. Is there any RDBMS in industry that is specific to Hadoop most used? Uh, I, I didn't get the context of your question, Narendra. See, maybe the, the Oracle or MySQL the, from the source table, basically. See, so uh, that's why I listed down all these. All these can be your sources. I worked on almost all. I, I worked on migration from Oracle to Hadoop, migration from MySQL to Hadoop, migration from Postgres to Hadoop, migration from Netija to Hadoop, migration from the Teradata to Hadoop, even DB2 also I worked. Okay. So that is where all your RDBMSs, all the enterprises are migrating from RDBMS to Hadoop, right? So there is no specific. Once you can run your, the commands are common, okay? Only thing is here you have a connect MySQL. So here JDBC colon MySQL is there, okay? In place of MySQL, if it is Oracle, JDBC colon Oracle colon thin thin for thin drivers or you can use the direct drivers also but the lightweight drivers we use for oracle the thin drivers jdbc colon oracle colon thin drivers thin and followed by the host name on which your oracle is running and optionally you can provide the port number if it is other than the default port number and you will provide your username and password and any other optional parameters to your Okay. Can you please? Uh, clear the screen. Uh, the last row is not visible. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, last line is not visible. Okay. Uh, sure, one um, yes, Satish. So, like, uh, for a table, if it doesn't have a primary key, so based on what values it will split the records into different I mean, very good question good question so it will not split it will run only one map task and if you want to speed up the process so if you mention like four mappers for that yep again another good question so if you specify if it is not having a primary key by default, it runs only one map task. Good that you asked me. Anyway, I have this in already slides. Um, if you don't have the primary key, it will run only one map task. And even on that, if you specify hyphen M space four or something, space 10, hyphen M 10, then it should run 10 map tasks. And by some key, it should split, right? Even that parameter, we only have to specify, okay? Anyway, I will show you that in in one of our slides. It, it will definitely come, okay? So please wait until that. What is that option is? So um, here I was discussing about the two arguments, hyphen, hyphen columns to select only a particular columns to import and where class to specify the where class to import the selected records only and hyphen m also we talked about now uh, even those these two options in my opinion uh, are like deprecated we no longer need them because we have a free form query support like import hyphen hyphen connect username password and hyphen hyphen query select hyphen hyphen query you can write any query inside this then you don't need those columns and hyphen where hyphen hyphen where all those conditions any query that you can write inside your 
this hyphen hyphen query statement hyphen hyphen query the select uh, whatever the columns you need from table and provide your where class on whatever the condition and one extra thing that we need to provide with this hyphen hyphen query option is that in your where class finally you have to specify and dollar conditions this is something that that is mandatory the scope expects okay so there will be some default conditions that it requires scope requires so we need to specify and dollar conditions if you don't specify scope will warn you that to specify this there hyphen m minus one target directory and you have one more option called hyphen hyphen delete target directory so if the di directory is already present the target directory will get deleted flushed out and then a fresh copy will this is something like overriding your existing contents override the existing contents and copy the records freshly new fresh copy of the data to the same directory okay so when you don't have any uh, conditions to specify there then even then if you are using a free form query you should specify the dollar conditions select employee name employee number first name last name from employee where dollar conditions hyphen m import without where class now um so once you import this uh, anyway this this is just a create table statement for uh, employees in, inside mysql okay so i ran this hive import here let's see that later so import employees into hdfs to demonstrate the export yeah so to uh, to test with your export here the mandatory condition is that the table needs to be present in your mysql that's why i gave this create statement there so now you have tested importing your data into hdfs from rdbms now you have this directory products table is there the products contents are there on your hdfs okay products contents are there on your hdfs Uh, sure. Can we check that uh, hive table if products table? We will check that. We'll check. I, I I have a separate slide for that. I will show you that time. Okay. No worry. So I might be confusing you in the order, but please bear with me. Okay. Um. Slash user slash warehouse. No, I don't want to see this. Cloudera scoop products. This is where I have this all those four files. I will export this into MySQL. So currently my products table is having 13. 45 rows and again if i copy these records back to there since i have a primary key if, if there are any updates the updates will get to happen otherwise it will remain 1345 only same as it is uh, so i will not be able to test them whether the export happened successfully or not 
so let me create another table create table products to like products okay so this is an empty table now so let's start from products to so it's an empty set now let's export into that So for exporting, instead of import, we use export, if and if and connect, username, password, tables, if and if and table is uh, export products to export directory, export directory, this is beginning export of products to let that run so once that is completed we'll see that so in this export um, yeah we can specify the staging table also while exporting it so the purpose of staging table is that let's say I created a staging table so here employees underscore export underscore staging with the same columns same same schema same layout the purpose of staging table is that suppose in the middle of a data transfer some exception got arised and your data transfer got stopped okay so then partial copies will not be done onto your target table either all the records will get copied onto your employee table or no records will get copied your staging table might have 50% of the records copied. So once this is like your staging area into which uh, this employees underscore export underscore stage into this table, all your records will get copied first. And if this is successful from here to here within MySQL, the data records will get copied. Okay. So instead of avoiding the partial updates or partial transfers, we can use this staging table and hyphen hyphen clear staging table options. So before starting your import, uh, before starting your export, you can specify this, uh, these two arguments. If you specify this before transferring the data, it clears the staging table and then starts freshly copying the data from your export directory into the staging table first and from staging table to your target table next. Okay, so I will leave that for you to practice with staging table option. Okay. And even hyphen hyphen direct running that hyphen hyphen direct and storing them as sequence files or uh, storing them as parquet file hyphen hyphen as parquet file uh, I leave those things for your practice only okay so I, I won't be showing all these I will directly run into importing the data into hive so that one anyway we run we will verify that as per
error during export export job failed exported 846 records how come duplicate entry 510 for key primary okay there is a duplicate key in the file column product price cannot be null can't export the data please check failed map task logs only 846 records got transferred out of 1345 after that there was an exception so it received a duplicate key and duplicate entry 510 for primary key primary and this is for so some of these data values uh, validations we need to take care so while loading that back into your mysql let me see thousand forty six per copy so what are the missing records so what is the problem with that 510 id 510 it has received a duplicate So one map task got failed, I think, after copying some of these records. Okay. Um, so might be uh, because of this. Let me see. You can see only one in this. Okay, I think the problem is, oh, okay. The product price on this 510 record, let's say what is a product price column. So that is null in the first attempt, the map task, you know this, right? Any map task, if it fails in the first attempt, it will not get killed. It will re-attempt up to four times. That means, it will try to reinsert that record. So that is where the second time you got it as underscore zero one, uh, underscore one attempt. So it has thrown you. So this underscore zero attempt. So it got this exception. So product price column is null. And underscore the first attempt, it is like a duplicate key. Right? Second attempt got failed, and that map task, even this this map task is failed with. So whatever the records that are pending from that map task, since out of the four map task, one map task after copying some of the records it got failed. So that's why you you got only thousand forty six records copied instead of thirteen forty five. Now what is that column the product price let's see why is it that null for 
while exporting back. So product price is says like after product name. Let's see. Why is it null? Seems like it's having this having the data. This is the ID and followed by category ID, followed by the name, followed by the description and product price. So 510, right? Row ID 510. while reinserting back while exporting your data back to it so you may not find the records in the sorted order got exported might be for some other record. Okay. So you can verify this again um, in the MapReduce job log files. So what is the record that caused this issue? You can check here. You can further drill down. And if there is any bad record, so we have to remove such records because your MySQL, that is what the difference between your RDBMS and the Hive, right? So RDBMS is a schema on write. At the time of write, if there is any data that is not constrained as per the column data types, it will not allow. Whereas Hive will allow it but at the time of reading it back, so you will get that as a nulls. Four maps got failed. If it's easier. Can't export the data. One minute sixty seconds cannot export the data six seconds. So check here for full logs. Asynchronous SQL output format got exception and update thread. So processing the splits, this this uh, that record is present in this part hyphen m hyphen zero 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 one, and even the record also you can see. So then you can sleeping before. Uh, Shiva, mm -hmm. I just checked the product table. There are a couple of products uh, which does not have a product price. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that those are the uh, those are the things that are causing bad records. Okay. So on the input eight zero nine, 
uh, it is saying that at position bar zero zero currently processing the split. Uh, if you see here, yeah. So those records, whichever is having, so somehow you might have created in uh, MySQL, but when you are trying to export, so that is the right constraint that is causing this exception. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Ramesh. I mean, to verify from the source MySQL table itself. Okay. So if you have your data as per the data types that you have specified in your MySQL, all your records will get copied successfully. Okay. Otherwise, so either I and mean, since you have the same table available in MySQL, you are able to check that in the uh, MySQL directly. Otherwise, thing is you should um, debug your query log messages this way. So this is common for any MapReduce job or any Hive or any Scoop or Mr. CP anything. If anything goes wrong, so find out which map task got failed and open that in the resource manager and open the full logs you can see here the simple record the 809 followed by this so and so and after this what are the records that were processed and the current record previous record if you can check all the complete logs you can you can find out okay somewhere you will be able to uh, capture it so that way we have seen an example for export also now so we ran an import directly into hive as well so this command hive import and we saw that uh, that got went that went successfully so this is the command that so even in this 1345 records this is the command where I ran that hive, right? hive import. So it imported all 1345 records onto HDFS first. From once it got those records onto HDFS, and in HDFS, it uses this temporary directory, whatever I specified in the target directory, target DIR. So this target DIR, so this uses this temporary directory as a staging area. So it copies all your 1345 records into that temporary directory. And from there, so it creates a table in Hive by looking at the data types of your MySQL. It, it does a basic conversion. Let's say if you have a var char or a char in MySQL, it uses string here. If you have an integer there in MySQL, it uses int here. And similarly, um, any other data types, it uses the corresponding matching data types on Hive. But there are some limitations. Mostly, the by default Hive created, by default scoop created Hive tables will have the data types ints and strings. If it can't, uh, especially it cannot uh, identify the date types and all those things, dates and decimals, all those things. Even they all will get created as a strings only on your hive. Okay. In order to overcome that limitation also, we have one more argument. We'll discuss that later. But before that, let's verify the table first. So it creates a table on hive and loading the uploaded data into hive. So whatever the uploaded data into temp directory, that data is being loaded into the direct database here. So as you asked your question, it, it, lo it creates the table in default database in Hive. Yes, you can specify the database also in the arguments into which database you should create this table as well. We'll see those arguments as well. Okay. Siva. So, Yes, Anand. You are man. This is very intent. Um, so it's very confusing. I'm, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not seeing any difference. This exactly feels like I'm going to the same session as Hive and Impala 
there is not much difference you have same map reduce technology you have everything so what is the difference here i'm a little bit lost what are we what is this tool i mean you know what exactly is this diff doing different um i'm you not see my uh, highlighting any differences here anand first thing i am trying to show you the usage of scoop no no i i get it that, that i totally get it but what exactly is the advantage what is what is different this scoop what is so different how about you scoop? copy your rdvms data into your uh, hive but that we can do through the same tools we looked at it, right same same uses right how do uh, you open copy? a jdb open a jdbc connection and try to get it load into the files right so try to load them into files and then create a table and then load the data right uh, so the only difference is that we are not creating files here we are just uh, directly loading from rdbms first is that right see if you know the jdbc connection you will make right. it hard to write a jdbc client and get create the files and then create the table and then the load the files into table so this is the simplest approach simplest tool with one command you can directly copy your add mysql table into hive table you're not seeing any difference you're not seeing any advantage here mm -hmm. with one simple command i mean since um you are you know that process you are aware of that you can write java clients and you can get the data you can create the tables all those things correct so this is more developer friendly and simple tool to use just with one single import command you are able to copy that entire mysql table into your hive mm. not your advantage i see i see Yeah, you don't have to write all those. What we did for oh, I see. Yes, you don't have to write that such big Java clients. Correct. Why? Well, yeah, I forgot about that. You know that you have yep. to write those. Java. And even if you use Java client, Java client to an RDBMS, how do you get the parallel processing? Java client is one single thread for your RDBMS. Right? So this definitely saves ton of work. Yep. So it it saves your development work, development of work. Also, its execution efforts also got reduced because if you write a simple Java client for your RDBMS on a ten million records table, there will be one thread that will be receiving records one after the other in sequence in sequential fashion. But here, if you use a map task or a map reduce job. It it can parallelly trigger many map tasks and copy start copying uh, parallel splits. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, and this will also do a scheduling and everything. We can do that from here. From Woozy, you can do that. We'll discuss that oh, from after tomorrow. Okay, but not from here. Not from here. Okay. okay. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm I'm happy now. I'm able to contemplate because I was thinking like we're doing same thing. What is the difference here? <laughs> okay. With, with simple commands and with yeah. parallel processing capacity, which you can't do with your JDBC client. And the performance is also pretty high, right, compared to them, right? Yes, I'm obviously right? you will get parallel processing here, whereas JDBC mm -hmm. client you will not get that. and last thing the my the my sequel versus this one is the both same or little bit my sequel is faster my sequel versus uh, versus the scoop uh, interface this command this like scoop interface command i am running on on my sequel only from my sequel to pulling this commands from my sequel into uh, sorry pulling records from my sequel table into hive table using the scoop import command oh so you're only using scoop import okay okay oh. maybe because it's today is sunday night for you <laughs> you yeah, probably i'm sorry you're right and plus <laughs> <laughs> my god <Sorry>. <laughs>
Sorry, too much padding. Sorry. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, let's verify that table. Um, so I got this products table got created. Earlier it was not there, right? So with just one simple command, I was able to copy that MySQL table into Hive. Okay. And if you run this select a star from products, you can see all those 1345 records. 1345. Everything got copied. Okay, so this is your hive table. Now, checking here, the describe products, int, int, even, yeah, good that the latest versions is supporting the double as well now. And now if you see here, describe to products, you have, int of 11 int of 11 var care 45 var care and this has a float and this has var care so all their corresponding data types got converted into integer integer since we don't have to specify the size and this is string this is string and float got converted into double since we have only the double data type here and string i think we have float as well no uh, it is string again. Okay. okay, now let's see few other extra arguments that we can play with. Okay, I have one important topic that is incremental imports. So once after that, I will try to cover as much as arguments that I can run in the session itself. Otherwise. I will leave those things for your practice. Yeah, so this, this answers your question, uh, Satish. So what if you don't have a primary key and if you specify multiple mappers, you have to specify the column on which you should split them. So you don't have a primary key, but you have something similar something closure to it. At least let's say, if you have employees details, employee ID might be unique. And along with that employee ID detail, you have a department IDs also to which this employees belongs to. This by department ID, if you split by, and let's say if you get eight department IDs total, total if there are eight department IDs, and if you split them by four map tasks, then two department IDs will get processed by each mapper. Even if that department ID is not unique. For thousand employees, it, even if you have just eight department IDs, so two, two department IDs will get distributed by each mapper. And that way, so when you don't have a primary key, then there is no guarantee that the equal distribution will happen between your map task. One map task may transfer 5,000 records and the another map task may transfer just 1,000 records. Because you don't have a key that can specify the equal distribution of the records. Okay. Now, performing an incremental import of new data after having already imported the first one lakh records. Okay. So, if you use hyphen hyphen append, anyway, let me. Um, 
let me take a separate slide for this. I have uh, examples, dedicated examples for that. I think. Uh, there is one more import all tables argument. So this command, if given a table name, uh, database name, in this database, how many other tables are there? All those tables can be imported at a time using import all tables onto your hive or onto your HDFS. Export we have seen, creating saved jobs, jobs also we'll see. Scoop evaluate, we have already executed this. Okay. So in scoop evaluate, you can run any queries into this. Even I'm running this query into insert into your MySQL table directly from your scoop. Any records insertion into MySQL table. Okay, and before going to scoop job, for incremental imports, yeah, import hyphen hyphen incremental, yeah, so I will show you this first. Now I have this um, uh, I have copied all the 1345 records onto products directory on the HDFS, right? Now let's say if I insert two new records into the products table in MySQL, okay, select start from products. Insert into um, insert into products values or select um, Okay, I can't use this set. Let me use this values thirteen forty six and followed by category ID some thirty, some product name full kit and product description. Okay, and product price. So I make it 30.25. And image, I will specify some test image. I should uh, give that URL, but anyway, that's fine. Category same website Okay, so I just um, just inserting two records here. So now, if I need to import only these two records, I since. I already imported 1345 records. I don't need to fetch them again. I need to fetch only those two new records that got uh, inserted recently. Now I can do that by incremental imports. This is one of the important uh, topic that even you might get this in your interviews. Okay hyphen hyphen table hyphen hyphen target dir
target dir i will keep that as it is hyphen hyphen incremental append hyphen hyphen last modified value 1345 last modified value as 1345 so unrecognized argument hyphen hyphen last modified value um the argument name check column id okay hyphen hyphen check column id uh check column and last value okay check column which column i should check the product id right so this is the product underscore id is the column that i should check and what was the last value 1345 so if i specify this here in the last value then while importing from that table it checks on this column 1345 and anything that are later than this 1345 id only those records will get copied Uh, Shiva, what if we don't know the value? What if we don't know the value? Again, good question, Satish, from today, from here on. I will show you that. And Shiva, like likewise, import uh, incremental update. Is it? Is there any kind of like export uh, incremental update? Export incremental updates are not there. Only thing is. you have to uh, check your uh, your mysql what is the maximum record that you have received and in your file you have to check so that way that's it because this is exporting from a file if it is a table you could have applied some some queries right otherwise uh, since it is from a file you can't specify those all those things that is here Shiva, what about joins? And if I want to use some complex import, right? If I yes. want to join multiple tables, you can use that. Good question. Again, um, you have a hyphen hyphen query option, hyphen hyphen query, right? That I have shown you in the slide. Yep. Yep. Hyphen hyphen query in single quotes. You can give your query, join two tables, and fetch the result and. import that result into your htfs yes that will work okay and if i want to apply some transformation do whatever you want i will give you all these things as assignments for you okay. and shiva how do we import like every half an hour updated values to uh every half an hour updated values so you can set you can schedule a job busy job Okay, every half an hour that scoop import will run, and if you specify the incremental import, that will get only those records from the so new. How, how does it check the old values and new values and all the updated values can be imported? Uh, updated values, I'm not talking about only the newly inserted records that you can get. So for updated values, there is one more argument that I will explain you in a few minutes. Okay. Oh, okay, Shiva. Shiva, last one quickly. What about parameterize? You know, like if I want to apply a pass a variable and do a parameterize query. Uh, pass a variable. If it is in a Unix shell script, yes, you can pass a variable. Um, I think if you use. dollar curly brace you can specify that something like um i fun i fun query uh, you can try with this select column names i got your point like where id greater than um 
something like id value okay you try with this okay perfect okay so scoop import uh with free form query using joins on two tables okay and incremental imports with scoop jobs anyway i will show you this but still i want you to practice that because that is one another important topic um and then uh scoop import um, using hyphen hyphen direct and multiple uh, mappers and what else um, um, when there is no key when there is no primary key and there is no primary key usage of split by okay so and store results into parquet file okay this is very very good exercise use the hyphen hyphen direct also mappers should be greater than one multiple mappers and the constraint is that you don't have a primary key on your mysql but still you need parallelism so then you need to you split by and i need the results onto hdfs not as a text file but as a parquet file And in this, I didn't show any of these arguments running on the shell, but still I want you to do it. Okay. Our slides have examples for them, so you can run them. That's not a big deal. For parquet, it's hyphen hyphen as parquet file. That's it. And for split by multiple mappers and hyphen hyphen direct, I have given you examples. Okay. So let me show you this incremental um, append and then the scoop jobs. So with that, I'm good enough to. So using font partition. See, if you see here, it retrieved only two records. Okay. It retrieved only two records instead of all 1347 records. And this answers, uh, someone asked me, yeah, Satish asked me, right? So that's why I, I kept this aside for some time. So this query itself will answer, uh, this message is answer your question, Satish. Incremental import complete. To run another incremental import of all data following this import, Apply the following arguments, hyphen hyphen incremental import, check column product ID, last value as 1347. But either you can use this way if you don't know, or consider saving this with scoop job hyphen hyphen create. If you save this, if I need to uh, increment once again, uh, if I need to load once again, I should give the last value as 1347 as it suggested me. But every time I need to keep track of this count. So if I don't want to keep track of that on my own, and if I want that to be tracked by scoop itself, then I can create a scoop job. Okay. So before creation of scoop job, first let's verify the output of the previous import. Cloudera, a scoop products into the same directory. A 
have seen there were um two um these things like uh two records were there and by default it is having primary key so it should run four map task yes it ran four map task and so it copied one record by record the map task 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 since those are empty files it it uses the lazy output format so the those files didn't got created it ran four map it might have ran the four map task or you can specify here oh no it ran only uh, two input splits because it uh, have identified this if it would have at least four records then it would run that into four things so you have the newly copied records into this the newly inserted records into my sql table copied onto your hdfs now so for extension to your question uh, so if we don't want to remember that counts what was the last value that was imported so then i can create this as a job scoop job you can create scoop job scoop job hyphen i can create let me check the syntax once again scoop job hyphen hyphen create job name yeah so followed by the job name uh, products import products import is my job name okay hyphen hyphen Uh, import space connect hyphen hyphen connect and check column id last value thirteen forty seven. This should create a job there. So the job got created. If you want to verify all the jobs in scoop, so these will get stored in the scoop meta store. Scoop will also store a kind of meta store. That metadata will also be present in your MySQL only. If you run this, show databases. You can find something. for meta store oozie it stores somewhere in the should have a database here um it stores that even its meta store in the mysql only let me show you this scoop job hyphen hyphen list it will list down all the jobs that are present in here products underscore import is the job that you have just now created and if you want to execute yes scoop job hyphen hyphen exec followed by products underscore import so whenever you run this so it will run from this number next time let's see Let's insert two more records now into my SQL table. Thirteen forty-eight. Okay. So let me keep all those things as it is. Thirteen forty-nine. Okay. So it inserted two more records. Now, if I run this scoop job. Scoop job hyphen hyphen exec products underscore import. It prompts you to enter the password. The uh, job.
Okay. So to identify 1348 to 1349 are the records that you need to copy. Now, anyway, even then, you need to remember that count to create that job, right? So once you create the job, you no longer need to remember that number. Okay, so that I will show you. So in my job, at the time of job creation, I specified 1347. But once after this import gets completed, I will insert two more records and then I will run the same job once again. Then we will see whether it copies the four records or just the two records, the latest two records. So it ran fine. So it retrieved two records. Okay. And if you see here, saving incremental import state to the meta store, scoop meta store, and the updated data for job products underscore import. And if you see it now, uh, it, if you insert two more records into this, Let's see, 1350, 51, 52. Let's insert three records. Now, I'm not specifying the ID now. I will simply run the same job once again. Job will get executed. Once again, uh, Shiva, to open that products and just import job. I need to open. Yeah. What is that? Can you open this uh, products and just import? Like I want to see what's coming. Okay. Yeah. Let the let this complete. Okay. And see, it took that range from 1350 to 1352. Okay, by default, that state got updated, and that state uh, will get updated with the meta store.
Okay. Shiva. Scoop job. Yes, Satish. One second. Okay. Um, show product it's underscore import. What? That. That show option is there or not? It uses this. If you see, um, this is the show of that job. This is the target directory, and and incremental last value got automatically updated. Starting the feed. Okay. So every time you run this incremental import, that state will get updated there. Okay, so you can add that to here. Scoop job exec. And if you want to see a job status, you can use a show job. Okay. Oh, you already have this job show. Sorry. Okay. Thought I went. Yes, Satish. It's not Satish, it's me, Shiva. Oh. Yeah, Akila. Yes, tell me. Uh, actually, in MySQL and all, we'll have the concept of foreign key, where one table gets related to the other table. Mm -hmm. And between those two tables, if we want to get only one table, like how can we import that one particular table? So if there are two tables, if you want to get only one table? Yeah, based on foreign key, not primary key. Based on foreign key. Can you write a query for that? Actually, I am not that good in SQL, but I have heard about foreign key and all in my academics. So I'm asking. Yes, foreign key will be there. So if you want to get a records from a table, obviously you need to write some query, right? Yeah, yeah. Put that query here in hyphen hyphen query. Okay, 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 okay. Anything that you can express as a query, you can run it here. No, I have some a couple of questions. Like we have all these concepts of normalization data. You don't find all these concepts in Hive, Impala, all those things. Yeah, it's stored processes. Okay, well, that uh, with those concepts uh, won't affect when we are importing. No, that the won't affect. They won't affect. Okay. If I'm importing from your RDBMS, so those concepts are just to build your data model. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, they, mm -hmm. while retrieving from a table, they don't affect. I mean, even if you are writing a query, for what does, how does that matter? If you foreign key, primary key relationships are nothing but you have an employee table and you have a department table, and department ID in employee table is a foreign key. Okay, one more thing like when we miss some values, like in Hadoop, if we have a couple of number of uh, null values, we use a custom string and we encode those values. Now, how will it, how will it be in scoop? Uh, if we have custom values? No, no, if we have more number of null values. Okay. Like uh, in Hadoop, one use case you said, right? When we have more number of uh, null values, mm. like uh, how will uh, will will encode them using a custom string? Yes, exactly. That I have given you uh, in another few slides. How to deal with them? The null values from uh, from your RDBMS. I'm going to cover that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So here I have a null string replaced with this backslash backslash n on your HDFS file, and even the non-null string, I mean null non-string, a null string data types 
you will find only two types of data types if you categorize them on a high level. One is strings and others non-strings, right? Okay, okay. Like uh, in the before when we we were when you were running, we got one exception that null. Yep. Null value. Null values. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, in that use case, can we can we use this? No. If you use this, only thing if you have in your source MySQL database all those nulls, you will get them. Yeah, actually, I thought I will explain you this in detail. Um, let me explain the context of dealing with nulls, special ha special handling with nulls. Uh, okay. 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 Thing is, if you have a null in your RDVMS MySQL, uh, that null is nothing but is something like this on your MySQL. This will be treated as a string in, once you import this into your um, HDFS, this will get imported as it is onto your HDFS file. You will see this as a null as a string. Getting my point? Mm -hmm. So yeah. in MySQL, null means it has a special meaning. In, yeah, yeah. You import into HDFS, null means it's a, just a four characters, N-U-L-L, -L, which is nothing but a string. It gets treated as a string. But actually, your is treated as a null. But in Hive or Impala, if you have a backslash N, backslash double backslash n then that is treated as a null value mm -hmm. yeah so that means whenever you find any null value for any string data types or any non string data types replace all those nulls with backslash n once you import it to hdfs file then if you use that file in your hive table then even in Hive table, you get them as nulls only. Otherwise, they will become strings. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Got it. Thank you, Shiva. Okay. Yeah, only the, it will run uh, replace kind of thing. That's it. Yes. It will run replace kind of stuff. Okay. Now, let me come back to the previous the slides, earlier slides. Yeah. So, this is a uh, scoop job. Um, purpose. So you can create a scoop job. It could be either import command or export command. You can write it once and whenever you need to run it, you can run it. Just scoop job, hyphen hyphen exec space job name. You don't need to uh, keep that command every time and run it. And if you want to list all the jobs, you, you have hyphen hyphen list. If you want to delete a job from the scoop jobs list, you can use hyphen hyphen delete. And if you want to inspect, hyphen hyphen show, just we have seen. Okay. And this is the additional advanced command arguments that I have given here. So, so far we have seen a, a basic list of arguments and additional commands. This is the complete list of arguments that you can play with your hyphen hyphen connect followed by JDBC URL. So based on your RDVMS type, we'll frame this JDBC connection string. And other than MySQL, let's say, um, I mean, this is not mandatory always. So sometimes, sometimes if they are not working, you can try giving this parameter as well. Sometimes you are getting any exceptions connecting to your RDVMS, then you can give this, specify the connection manager class, class name. So this, this class name and hyphen hyphen driver class, even this is not mandatory, this is also optional. By default, it should get picked up, okay? So in case, in case if it is not getting picked up, you can manually specify this. If it is MySQL, so mysql.jdbc.driver. If it is Oracle, 
hyphen hyphen driver oracle dot jdbc dot oracle driver similarly the class names the driver class names and username and password so so far we have seen hyphen hyphen password so if you use hyphen p um, instead of hyphen hyphen password here since i have this import command instead of using this so let it fail i'm not going to change any other thing if i specify hyphen p i don't need to provide the password on the command line so it prompts me to enter at the time of running it so i don't reveal this password on the command line itself okay so i am not worried about the execution of this so i just wanted to show you this prompt okay next so even these two options either providing hyphen hyphen password that is insecure and hyphen p that is if you want to run it as a batch from a script and automate it that is not possible so then the option and the most secure option is that create a file hdfs file and inside that hdfs file store store your password okay store your password and make the file permissions to that file as 400 400 means only the owner can with whatever the owner with whatever the user that file got created that user can read that file and not any others can read that file this is this is a traditional approach only not something new in in hadoop uh we store that file we we store that password in a file and uh, we make that file permissions as 400 so no others can see or read the contents of that file except that scoop user with that scoop user will create that file and we will provide that file using hyphen hyphen password hyphen file Shiva? Yes, sir. We have this uh, scoop tool now. Then why do we pe why do people go with JDBC client? In which case? In JDBC client for Impala? Or no, no, for like a, for a, importing the. Um, I don't see any reasons to go for JDBC client for importing. actually we had a conversation that day when there was a network issue so shree was saying was saying that he was using jdbc client to import uh, for his migration project so i thought But the problem that, what happens is with jdbc client you will not get the parallel processing yeah then what's the what's the case in using that if there is if there's lots of permi uh, sorry performance issues of course there are lots of performance issues if you use jdbc client and if your source table is having some let's say 100 million records it might take 1 hour 2 hours 3 hours if you use scoop tool on the edge node you will be able to copy that in just 5 to 10 minutes less than 5 minutes okay uh i'm asking why people are going for jdbc then might be they might not aware of this or they might have faced some setting up setup issues mm -hmm. so if that is the same case happens with a client then how how will, how we need to do it in real time first i i should get what is that issue at all no actually <laughs> okay see Oh, I yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I know that someone followed that option, that approach, and why he is following that approach is your question, first question. Yeah, yeah. First thing, I am not aware of 
what the actual issue he faced with scoop okay so my 100% recommendation is towards scoop only mm -hmm. because we i mean as i was telling you right i worked with with all these migration projects from nitita mm -hmm. from oracle from teradata from postgres um i worked all these migrations in all our places we used this scoop uh, tool only okay okay uh, i don't see any reason uh, that you need to write any jdbc clients directly in the worst case in case if you don't have a scoop available in the worst case in map reduce you can use db input format and db output format yeah or in pig even more simpler options in pig you have uh, the db uh, loaders rdbms db loaders and storers either yeah. you can use okay yeah using this many options as he was using jdbc we thought like it might be uh, security constraint but no. after seeing this uh, slide i was like uh, what might be the reason other than that so uh, maybe lack of awareness or some setup issues i guess okay 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 either lack of awareness or setup issues of your scoop Okay. 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 Thank you, Shiva. Yeah. Um. So this way you can specify these uh, connection parameter, connection manager, driver class, all these things, and yeah, your control uh, control arguments like hyphen hyphen as text file or as sequence file. If you want to select only few specific columns. So you will see in these slides whatever all the previously discussed arguments also you can find them here because this is a complete list of arguments that you can play with your scoop. Okay, so to get all the columns and to specify the table name and to specify the query either use hyphen e or hyphen hyphen query or if you want to specify only the where class use that. And to specify the number of mappers, either specify hyphen hyphen num mappers. Here, whenever you see this big dash, this is double hyphen. Okay, so this PPT is converting that as a one single big dash, but treat this as a double hyphen. And the basic funda is that when there is only one character, then prefixing that you will find only one hyphen. If there is a word, if there is a multiple characters there is a string then you will find double hyphen before that if you observe that pattern there is only one single character then you will find one hyphen otherwise double hyphen if double hyphen is to append to an existing stfs data and you can even specify the compression as well some record having price as zero so in Hadoop processing, we use custom string constants to encode missing values. Yeah, you have answered that question. Too. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, this is using hyphen Z or hyphen hyphen compress. You can enable the compression technique and you can even specify the compression codec also. There might be some other argument to specify that. And split by column and delete target directory. Yeah, I mean, these are self-explanatory, okay. I don't need to spend much time on these things. Go through these things. And null values, handling null values that. Incremental imports, yes. Incremental, the incremental types, you have two types, out of them one we have already ran, tested there. Hyphen, hyphen, incremental space append it is to get the new records and check on what column and what was the last value. And if you specify this in a job, you don't even remember, you don't even need to remember this last value every time. And the second type is, you didn't add any new records, but the existing records itself got changed. So existing records itself got updated. So that time, you should have a one extra column related to date and timestamps. And based on timestamp, we can get the updated records. 
only based on the date and timestamp columns. If you have a uh, timestamp column in the pro products table, and in the within that same existing 1345 records, change some 10 records and the and update the timestamp. And you will specify incremental space last modified and check column. Specify that column that corresponds to the timestamp data type and specify that last value till what time you received last time. Let's say till um, 9th July, you retrieved records last time. Now you need to receive the records that got updated on 10th July. So then if you specify the 9th July date and timestamp value here. So any, any values other higher than that column will get retrieved. It is same as your append only. There in the append, you specify the primary key column. Here in the modified, in the last modified, you will specify the date time column and last value there. That's it. Okay, so you can you can try with that. I will write that into. Uh, incremental import with last modified as another assignment. Okay, just give me five, five more minutes. I will try to quickly wrap up. And hive importing, yeah. So hyphen hyphen hive import, it directly copies that into hive importing. Um, hyphen map column hive, override mapping for specific column to hive types and which hive table you want to load it into you can specify the table name also in hive and database name also you can specify them there and partition value or partition key also you can specify if it is a partition table okay now so that there is one important um, map column hive this one this is one of the important uh, argument so which you need to try with to change the data types let's say employee id is a big integer on your mysql but that big integer also will get created as a integer data type on hive but you want to retain it as big int only then hyphen hyphen map column hive a space in single quotes you can specify the column names and their data types eid will get created as a big int and employee name as string and salary as double designation as string and department as string you can specify their column names and their data types on your hive okay so instead of the default data types that hive uh, that scoop derives if you want the data types that you specify there and you can even specify the date for any column that they will get treated as a date data type by default your scoop treats all your dates also as the strings only but if you want them as a dates on hive also you can specify that uh, data types here this will be helpful there And HBase importing, yes, play with this command. It will directly import into that HBase table. So connect to a table, delete target directory, hyphen hyphen HBase table, table name, column family. And if the table is already present, you can leave, you can uh, omit this argument. Otherwise, you can specify hyphen hyphen HBase create table. And what is the row key? What is the column? So row key should be your primary key of your MySQL or primary key of your RDBMS. That primary key, if you specify here, so with this details, it will freshly create one table in HBase with this table name and creates a column family. Under one single column family, you will be able to copy all the records. 
okay so these are some hedge catalog arguments as well and anyway, we didn't discuss about that hedge catalog So with that, I quickly wrapped it up the scoop session. So to give you a quick recap, it talked about import and uh, some of its important arguments and export import into Hive. We have ran import into HP. I have shown I have shown you the command and creation of jobs, scoop job, and listing them, executing them and inspecting them and then incremental imports append we have executed and last modified I have explained and that you can test okay and while exporting we talked about the staging tables also eva one question yes Nitu. um how can we know that if uh, there is any primary existing for the table, is there any SQL query for that? For? SQL query for what? Uh, to identify what is the primary key assigned primary in the table. Key, yeah, by looking at your source table, you will get it, right? I mean, just describe on your MySQL or your RDBMS, you'll find that. Describe products. See? As a primary key. Okay. And uh, can we also drop the primary uh, primary key from this table? From any table, like uh, dropping the primary key. No, you can't drop the primary key. I think no. you can set some constraints. Uh, maybe you can uh, you ca you can find it out. I think you can do. Narendra can answer this question. I'm throwing ball on Narendra. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Given a uh, table in which is already a primary key having that, so to drop that primary key, I think you can change that primary key to another column. Not sure whether you can create a table with the, uh, by just simply dropping that. Okay. And uh, when we create the tables by using simple create table commands like you have shown, mm -hmm. so those are the tables created without any primary key because we don't specify any, right? Yes, but I didn't create any tables uh, in MySQL. Uh, those are the existing sample database that already shipped with your Cloudera Quick Start VM. I didn't create these MySQL tables. But it won't be uh, any different, right? It will be the same com command create it's table and the same, same create table command. Yes, it's the same table cre create command. Yeah. I was just asking because there's an assignment. You have yeah, MySQL, MySQL, you will find a hell lot of documentation in Google. You don't need to worry about it. Okay. MySQL, uh, any RDBMS, create table statements, all those things. And then on your first first result itself, you'll get all the queries. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other question? Yes, Siva, uh, the, not related to this class, but from a planning point of view, mm -hmm. um, look, what are we looking for next? You know, how many sessions do this will go more? Uh, with this Friday, I'm trying to wrap up and close everything. The batch. Friday? Yep. Uh, this tomorrow we'll take up Flume and day after tomorrow we'll take up Uzi and after that some real-time tools, Cloudera Hue and the Cloudera Manager and uh, some real-time tools that we use and then the project discussions, that's it. So we'll have class all five days this week? Uh, yes, I request. If we if you attend on Friday, uh, that will be the last class. Okay. So tomorrow, flu. Okay.
and Wednesday Ozi and Thursday some real time tools and Friday project discussions. Oh, so so this will be through Thursday our time. Okay, okay. Yeah, through Thursday your time. One more extra day. Okay. One more extra day. That's it. Cool. Okay. Yeah, already it, it was very long journey. It started on May twenty fifth or so, right? So one week there and an entire June month and even in July. So two weeks till 16th or 15th close almost just a week less than two months mm -hmm. oh, fair enough yeah okay but, but you, you one, one thing uh, uh, if you can probably have a uh, little bit more um, case study you know uh, because we have covered so much probably one <laughs> class per case Okay. Yeah, I will. I will anyway cover that in the project discussions. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. It's already very late for you guys. Jenny, we know different things. Thoughts from. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Narendra. Thank you. Bye, bye.